So let's talk about tactical dreadnought armor and the shock elite of the space marines and chaos with an overview of the strongest and weakest terminators in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking terminators and in this one I thought we'd go through every single variant of space marine and tactical dreadnought armor and a few thoughts as to how they stack up in game. Terminators are all rather iconic to Warhammer 40k, clad in their iconic exo-armoured suits, far heavier than the plates that the majority of the chapter wear. Terminator armoured suits are usually only gifted to the shock elite of the chapter, often to the first company, or to the dread elite of chaos formations that have proved their worth in the Legion over the millennia. These guys are pretty much mini walking battle tanks, often equipped with chattering storm bolters and all manner of exotic power weapons. They might often deploy to battle via teleportation, striking at the heart of the foe from an unexpected angle, or fighting in great shipboard assault actions, their armour well proof against the void. For this video I thought we'd go through every single variant of Terminator unit in Warhammer 40k, for this one focusing on the actual squads as opposed to the character miniatures, as there are plenty of other characters that don the tactical dreadnought armour, talk about what they are, roughly what they do in game, and a very rough score out of 10 for how I'd assess their power in game right now. Starting out, I thought it made sense to start with your standard Space Marine Terminator. These guys are a classic made anew for 10th edition, nice and chunky upscale models armed with storm bolters and power fists, bearing the Crux Terminatus on their left shoulder pad that contains a relic of the Emperor's armour. With that big new profile, Terminator's got a glow up in 10th edition, going to toughness 5, a 2 plus save and a 4 plus invulnerable save, plus 3 wounds. These guys really don't care about small arms and light infantry shots really that much at all, for the most part you are going to need some heavier firepower or special weapons or heavy weapons to bring them down. For a standard Space Marine Terminator unit, it's 185 points per 5. The Storm Bolter can give you 4 rapid fire shots to within 12 inches, and the Power Fists have you striking with 3 attacks at Strength 8, AP 2 and Damage 2. You can swap them out for the Anti-Tank Chain Fists. Otherwise these guys, like the rest of the Terminators, can Deep Strike, the Loyalist Terminators do get a Teleport Homer, which might allow you to rapid ingress in one useful location, though that's maybe a little bit situational. They get a nice heavy weapon, the Cyclone Missile Launcher often being the preferred go-to there. And their special rule is Fury of the First. When they attack the Oath of Moment targets, they get plus one to the hit roll, which should mean that they convert just about every single attack into a hit. Overall, it's certainly a stat line to make the Emperor proud. Unfortunately, despite some really quite chunky and upgun stats for 10th edition, Terminator squads don't really seem to be considered all that strong on the competitive scene. It is kind of rare to see Space Marine army lists using them to any great numbers. For the points cost, their damage isn't enormously exciting, even if their durability is kind of fine. I feel like they're in a slightly awkward spot where they're really not that bad if you build around them, though generally building around different units seems to give you more raw power. Plus I'm not sure the detachments have really helped them out all that much. If the first company task force was a little bit more powerful, then Terminators would be a bit better. It still has some nice enough support for them with the repeated teleporting or first turn deep strike things, but it's really not considered all that strong. Can't really give Terminators around about a 6 out of 10 for power rating. Not awful and can be kind of fun with rapid ingress, though they do seem to be a very rare side on the Space Marine competitive scene. Their brothers in arms are the Terminator Assault Squads. These guys are still waiting on their models at the moment. Feels kind of inevitable that Games Workshop will release new patterns for these guys. And it would be fun to see the guys armed with the Thunderhammer and Storm Shield and the Lightning Claws reimagined at the new scaling. The choice for these is to either take Twin Lightning Claws for 5 attacks at Strength 5, AP 2 and Twin Links or the Thunderhammer and Storm Shield. Thunderhammer attacks only hitting on a 4 plus but with devastating wounds versus the Power Fists. But the Storm Shield giving you a seriously tanky unit going up to 4 wounds apiece. Really quite nice against certain firepower with damage 3. They swap out their Fury of the First special rule for Terminatus Assault. This one causes Battleshock tests when they charge in. Something that's maybe a little bit underwhelming in my opinion. Though occasionally it can get in the way of stratagems. Again could definitely be a unit to try and get close and get into combat with rapid ingress. And they're perhaps particularly interesting for the Black Templars chapter. If you're fighting with their Righteous Crusaders, then for one command point you can give them anti psyche which certainly gives those devastating wounds a whole new meaning. Overall, I would rank them at least fairly well balanced with the standard Terminator squad. Both usable enough, but maybe not stand out strong. I've chosen to rank them a 6 out of 10 here. 
Next up, I thought we'd talk through the other Imperial Terminators before cycling back to the chapter-specific variants. For the Knights of Titan, we have the Brotherhood Terminator Squad, 210 points per 5 models. These guys are equipped with their Nemesis Force weapons, so a whole bunch of attacks at Strength 6, AP 2 and Damage 2. And they can back up their Storm Bolters with maybe an Incinerator in the unit to purge some enemy troops. These guys do cost a fair bit more than the Loyalist Terminator variants, though I feel like in Grey Knights they have a very different role. Repeatedly teleporting around the board with their teleport assault means they can get close and can be a good escort for characters. Caldor Drago in particular can deliver them to a near guaranteed charge if you budget to command point. And they do pair pretty nicely with a Brotherhood Librarian as well and his very scary mortal wound output. Otherwise for special rules they get lethal hits on the charge. Really quite a nice advantage for Grey Knights given that some of them can struggle with tough tanks and vehicles. And within the squad they get some other fun stuff. An Ancient's Banner for plus one objective control helps out, and they're already OC2 when the regular Terminators are OC1 as well, so some very strong objective taking there. Plus the Apothecary within the unit is really nice, and Arthesium allows you to restore a slain model to the squad, and it could really punish the opponent for half killing a unit here. Overall I would rate these guys as really quite solid, quite a nice unit for some of the Grey Knight's sneakiest teleport tricks like Sigils of Exigence or the Mists of Dimos stratagem. And in particular, a unit with Caldor Drago delivered with all of those lethal hits and damage 3 attacks for him. That seems very nice. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10. If you prefer your Grey Knightly Terminators durable though, then there's the Paladin Squad. 225 points per unit of 5. These guys get a similar kind of profile but with a few twists. Feeling like a bunch of side grades compared with the Brotherhood Terminators really. An Emesis Force Sword hit on a 2+, plus, though they don't get the lethal hits on the charge, which is quite a blow. Maybe a little bit less effective against heavier stuff, but better against hordes or standard space marines. I get an inbuilt minus 1 to wound for anything that wounds them on a 3+, plus, which will be a great deal of the amount of things that are actually a big threat to them. And they lose the Apothecary, but still get the Ancient's Banner. I feel like there are arguments you can make for both units, really. Being tough and tanky definitely is a perk when you've got elite infantry jumping around the board. I'd probably rate them on a similar kind of level to the Brotherhood Terminators. Not massive amounts of difference between them given the side grades. I've chosen to rate them an 8 out of 10 here. My personal preference is more towards the Brotherhood Terminators, though I don't think there's really too much in it. Moving on, we've got the blinged up Terminators of the Adeptus Custodes. The Alarus Custodians are the plastic kit within the core army, but they do have the Forge World Aquilon as an alternative. As ever with Custodes vs Space Marines, these have a stat line that is far greater than your standard Marines. A massive toughness 7 and 4 wounds with a 2 plus save and the 4 plus invulnerable once more. And typically they tend to be armed with Guardian Spears, 5 attacks at Strength 7, AP 2 and Damage 2, hitting on a 2 plus because Custodes. They're more of a threat that range compared with many of their brothers as well. The Ballista's Grenade Launcher with a Blast Keyword and AP1 can be quite good for clearing out hordes. And they back that up with the regular Guardian Spear type shooting. And they can take advantage of the powerful Custodes core rules as well. Martial Guitar to choose your favourite damage boost in the fight phase. And the Aegis of the Emperor providing them good protection against mortal and devastating wounds. At the moment the Alarus Custodians are one of the most commonly taken units alongside the Custodian Guard and the Wardens. Aside from the shooting selling point and the extra wound they get, they also have two nice special rules. Rerolling wound rolls against characters, monsters or vehicles, which really helps them punch up against stuff. And the From Golden Light rule allows you to redeploy the unit once per game, taking them off the board at the end of the enemy turn and deploying them somewhere that's 9 inches away from the enemy. Quite nice to strike from an unexpected angle, or maybe in the right position to do secondaries or threaten certain objectives. They've even got a bunch of good stratagems to support them. Things like resurrecting a custodian stratagem has about maximal value here. Plus the very scary fights first on objectives. Overall they're a pretty massive threat and a staple to custodian's army list. I've chosen to give them a big 9 out of 10 here. Moving over to their fancy forge world cousins. And here we have the Aquilon custodians. These ones are 210 points per 3 models. So basically 5 points per model more than the Alarus. They get the Solarite Power Gauntlets, which I think are usually the way to go. A bit scarier than the Guardian Spear with Strength 8, which would be meaningful against a few targets, though not all of them. And then they get their own flavour of scary shooting. I feel like perhaps the Infernus Firepipe might be the most tempting with a Torrent Flamer at Strength 6 AP 1. But they could go for the more Terminator Busting Adrathic Destructor with Strength 6, Damage 3 and Twin Links. 
Their inbuilt boosts are re-rolling wound rolls of one against their chosen target, and they get a similar sort of roll to the regular Alaris custodians, allowing them to go into strategic reserve. Technically, maybe a little bit less powerful than theirs, given that strategic reserve means no coming in turn one. Overall, unfortunately, I feel like these guys are just kind of badly balanced, really. People were tending to take the Alaris custodians more than these, even when they were very similar points. The Alaris, I think, are just kind of better with their multiple shooting profiles to start with. And I'd argue that those full wound re-rolls outweigh the wound rolls of one. Now the five points apiece cheaper, it seems hard to justify these guys versus the Alaris. I feel like they're kind of eclipsed by them, even if realistically maybe not all that far behind to the point that they're not unusable. I have chosen to give these guys a 4 out of 10 though, as I feel like the Alaris Terminators are just better. Moving on to a few variants based Marine Terminators out of the chapters. First up we have the Deathwing Knights. They're the elite of the Dark Angels in a circle, fighting in their bone-coloured Terminator armour, the hammer that crushes the fallen Dark Angels that renounce the Emperor's light. They've had some seriously fun new models released for 10th edition, with the option between their power weapons or their maces of absolution, and in general I think they were quite popular and well received. Their points cost was maybe a bit disappointing at 235 points per model, that gets you a kind of interesting durable Terminator unit though, they get 4 wounds with their shields, and they get minus 1 damage built in with their inner circle rule, plus a watcher in the dark that gives them a 4 plus feel no pain once per game against mortal wounds. Between all that, they're just extraordinarily tanky, and particularly good against some things that might usually threaten terminators quite a bit, things like damage 2, damage 3, or even damage 4. For their weapons, they're actually really quite well balanced against the majority of targets, getting maces with strength 6, AP 1 and damage 2, all the power weapons with 5 attacks at strength 6, AP 2, damage 1, they kind of math out as somewhat similar. I'd probably go with the power weapons slightly, though I think there's not much in it. Overall, I don't really think they're too bad, they're certainly incredibly tanky to take out, and if they are allowed to chew through multiple things that they can damage well, they could certainly justify their cost over the course of a game. I feel like their cost was just a little bit north of what the internet was really hoping for, though. And as a result, they're kind of rarely seen in Dark Angel's army list, being locked to a squad size of just 5 of them didn't really help, nor did the downgrade in the damage characteristic of the maces, dropping from 3 down to 2. I guess they do have some at least fun and fluffy flavour support in the Dark Angels Unforgiven task force though, at being able to deep strike turn 1 and teleport places they normally wouldn't be able to access. Otherwise for the Deathwing, we have the regular Deathwing Terminator squad, now represented by the standard Terminators and the upgrade sprue for the Dark Angels. The Deathwind Terminator datasheet isn't really all that different from the standard Terminator one. It's 5 points more, and for that you get 3 main upgrades. You get a Watcher in the Dark for that once per game mortal wound defence. That one could absolutely be worth it. The Deathwing special rule is a slightly raised version of Fury of the First. Getting to ignore hit roll, weapon skill and ballistic skill modifiers is quite a big deal. And they also get to choose the option to take a Plasma Cannon if they'd like to. Though realistically it's not quite as strong as the Cyclone Missile Launcher, I don't think it really competes well on a damage front, never mind the chance of blowing up one of your own Terminators, even if it does have amazing rule of cool potential. Overall I would rate the standard Deathwing Terminator squad as a little above the regular Terminator unit, I think for the 5 points getting to ignore modifiers and the Watcher in the Dark are well worth those upgrades, unfortunately though it doesn't really seem to be quite enough to get them played competitively all that much. I've also chosen to give them a 6 out of 10. Again, perhaps usable, but not standout. For the Death Watch, I do feel like perhaps one of their more interesting unique datasheets are the Death Watch Terminators. These guys get a kind of interesting datasheet where they get to mix and match both regular and Assault Squad Terminator gear, having things like Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, or Power Fists and Storm Bolters. They are playing an inflated points cost at 210 points per 5 of them, but for that you also get really quite the meaningful upgrade of getting 3 heavy weapons in the unit, so you could be spamming out 3 sets of Cyclone Missile Launcher shots, or 3 rounds of Assault Cannon shooting, interestingly making them into a kind of curiously heavily armed shooting unit for Terminators. They do swap out the Fury of the First though for the Terminator Assault Squad style special rule, the one for the Battleshock test in melee. Overall I feel like they are worth the upgrade, getting maybe 2 Thunderhammer and Storm Shield Terminators paired with a bunch of Cyclone Missile Launcher ones seems nice, making the unit a little bit more tanky and certainly a lot more ferocious in the shooting phase before they charge in and do well in the fight phase. I've chosen to rank them a 7 out of 10, I feel like they are one of the Death Watch's strongest units such as they are. Finally for the Space Wolves, and in a similar kind of vein here we've got the Wolfguard Terminators, 
195 points per 5 here, so again a 10 point increase over the regular Terminator squad. Like the Death Watch Terminators, they get some very very flexible war gear, mixing and matching all manner of Power Fist, Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields and things like that. They can also trade out their Storm Bolters for combi weapons as well if you'd like. They also get the Deathwing style special rule where you get to ignore modifiers as well as having their generic Fury of the First. I feel like within Codex Space Wolves they maybe have a little bit more place than some other things. Space Wolves do have access to a fair few fun Terminator characters. I feel like Logan Grimnar and Fort is reasonable enough given that he gives you that massive turn of fight phase rerolls. And the Wolfguard Battle Leader and Terminator Armor can act as a lieutenant for your Terminator squads giving you lethal hits which is quite nice. Overall, I still say that HG maybe isn't standout. It definitely seems to be all about the Thunderwolves and the Wolfen in more optimised Space Wolf lists. I've chosen to rate them a 6 out of 10 accordingly. Moving on to the Fell Terminator formations of Chaos. And first up, we have the Bringers of Despair from the Core Chaos Space Marine Codex. 195 points per 5 of these guys. Due to the kit restrictions, they do have some slightly janky war gear restrictions. Three of them can take power fists, but not more than that. It could take some paired accursed weapons, one can have a reaper auto cannon if you'd like, and one could take a chain fist. As with quite a lot of chaos equivalents of other things, they can out damage quite a lot of their lawless contemporaries. They get their dark packs, which means that you could be getting sustained or lethal hits in melee, boosted up to critical on 5 depending on the mark that you choose, and with their despoiler special rule they get to re-roll the hit roll with those dark packs as well. And that could lead to an awful load of sustained or lethal hits depending on what you go for. You could potentially make them Chaos Undivided and with a Dark Pack and a Strastium you could be re-rolling hits and wounds in melee perhaps. And you could pair them with Abaddon the Despoiler if you do want a massive investment Doom unit. Just awesome damage and a big presence on the board and Abaddon can buff other things. Though you are looking at like 700 points if you wanted to max them out with that. Overall for Chaos Space Marines, since the points nerfs to other things, I feel like they're maybe coming back to the fore a little bit, perhaps. I still wouldn't rate them as maybe one of the absolute standout units of the book right now, though. I've chosen to rate them a 7 out of 10 here. I feel like they still have quite a lot of competition from chosen jumping out of rhinos with Chaos Lords or other units like Warp Talons or Possessed. The World Eaters have their Terminators use the exact same kit at the moment. It's 190 points per 5 of those. They get very similar war gear selections though they trade out the Dark Packs for the Blessings of Corn, potentially giving you things like Advance and Charge, Extra Movements, or better damage in close combat. They do hit just extra hard on the Charge as well. They already get a plus 1 Strength baked into their profile, so all the Power Fist equivalents hit at Strength 9, and the Melee Weapons hit at a Strength 6, and then that goes up further when you make a Charge, getting plus 1 Strength and plus 1 Attack, so compared with most other Terminators, they do hit very, very nastily. A special rule though is maybe a kind of weak one, it's one of the ones that gets better as your unit takes damage, something you can't really usually rely on before they hit home. Again, like a fair amount of other Terminators here, I feel like they're not unusable, but just don't really stand out within the context of their codex. Four elite damage dealers, world eaters list tend to build around 8 bound, even after the points increases. It doesn't seem that the slightly more durable per point world eaters Terminators seem to have that much of an impact comparatively. I think maybe as well World Eaters often tend to want to go for just absolutely massive damage and scouting up the board early and the Terminators having to come in via Deep Strike, maybe use Rapid Ingress if they want any sort of reliable charge perhaps isn't the best. Overall I've chosen to rank them a 5 out of 10 just due to competition in the rest of the index. It's maybe just not a great sign for them being particularly strong if they're basically unplayed competitively in an army that's taken some heavy blows to some of its best stuff. For the forces of Zinch, we have the Scarab Occult Terminators, 215 points per 5 here. And the forces of the Legion of Magnus come with a dedicated cycle within the unit and getting a minus 1 to wound against high strength attacks while there is a cycle present, so they do trigger that themselves even if you don't have a Terminator Sorcerer around. For their damage output, compared with most Terminators, they may be surprisingly shooty. Inferno Combi Bolters get an extra pip of AP and they can combine that with multiple Soul Reaper Cannons and Hellfire Missile Racks as well, giving them a bunch of Strength 10 Damage 3 shooting, and quite a lot of AP 1 with Devastating Wounds. The Psyche gets a Warp Smite as well, and they fight in close combat with Prosperine Capeshes, Strength 5, AP 2 and Damage 2. At the moment, for more competitive and optimised Thousand Sons list, the Scarab Occult Terminators don't really tend to see all that much play. I've occasionally seen them in tournament lists, but not as much as the Rubrics. 
I feel like at the start of the edition it was just a lot more feasible to layer all the big damage boosts on the same unit and just blow away an enemy unit with their shooting alone. After the changes to free stratagems and things that just didn't really become quite as useful. And they also cost more points since then, maybe driving people more towards the rubric marines and sorcerers that are kind of necessary for farming the cabal points. Overall, I'd say maybe they could afford to go down just a small amount, maybe like 5 or 10 points or so. I've chosen to rate them a 6.5 out of 10. They seem to be not that common in the most optimised list, though again kind of usable and powerful, and they do offer some different options to the army with the strength 10 shooting and some AP2 damage to melee. Overall, I was a bit on the fence with them, I've chosen to give them a 6.5 out of 10. Next up, for the tanky Terminators of Nurgle, we have the Blightlord Terminators, 165 points per squad of 5, so easily the cheapest Terminators out of any of the ones here. They really are quite durable, with a big toughness 6 on top of the regular Terminator stat line, though they do pay for it in lower speed, only going 4 inches. That can be a problem for trying to catch anything when they're on the board, particularly if the opponent's got any way to slow them down. Compared with the Death Shroud, the Blight Lords are the slightly more shooty version, attacking with a bunch of Plague Combi Bolters, and then can add in some special weapons to the unit as well. In close combat, they're good enough to take out some lighter infantry that might struggle with other things, Bubotic Blades are only damage 1 even if they do get lethal hit, and 1 per 5 can chip in with the more powerful Flail of Corruption, though that's still only AP 1 so might not be as scary against really tough stuff. Their special rule is that you get 2 reroll wound rolls of 1 when you shoot the closest unit, maybe in theory they could be an alright combo with the Lord of Virulence, though I feel like they do have the misfortune to share the Codex with the Death Shroud Terminators, who really feel like they kind of make them redundant, both coming in smaller units, being at least somewhat similarly tanky, and just being massively more threat in melee, to the extent where they can take down much tougher stuff than the Blight Lords can. Overall, mainly for that reason, I've chosen to give these guys a 5 out of 10. I feel like the Death Shroud just outcompete them. Speaking of which, the Death Shroud Terminators often function as elite guards for members of the Legion. They're armed with the fearsome scythes that are the Man Reapers. They really are quite cheap to field, at 40 points per model, so 120 points per 3, and those Man Reaper attacks get. 4 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2, all with lethal hits and hitting on a 2 plus. Really nice general purpose attacks there, and that also benefits from the contagions of Nurgle making enemy toughness lower, and potentially increasing their AP against them as well. They also can have an argument that they could be tougher against plenty of attacks compared with the Blight Lords as well, despite getting less Terminator per point. They get a minus 1 to wound special rule whenever they're attacked by something that's greater than their toughness. Again, really good for the sort of firepower that's actually going to be a threat to them. I feel like the two Terminator types in the Codex are kind of badly balanced. These guys are just taken almost all the time in more optimised armies versus the Blight Lords. And they also get a whole bunch of very usable and efficient characters to back them up. Typhus is kind of godly. The Lord of Contagion and Virulence are both fine, as is the Death Guard Terminator Sorcerer who I think particularly stands out as being quite nice as well. Overall, I feel like it's hard to go too far wrong with these guys. I've ranked them a 9 out of 10 here. Might be a good choice for units to rapid ingress, given that they have that slow movement though. Finally for the video, we have the Mega Knobs. Now, I don't know what you're talking about. These guys are clearly Terminators. Admittedly, the Orcs do a pretty reasonable job of copying the Humirs with their bolted together armour. Fairly chunky profiles with a big toughness 6, 3 wounds and a 2 plus save. They do lack the invulnerable save and the deep strike that come with actual terminators though sadly. They're 30 points per model which is really quite cheap and they come with some fairly flexible gear, usually either going power claw and combi weapon for a whole bunch of strength 9 AP2 and damage 2 or maybe going kill saw or twin kill saw for being a bit more threats to heavy hitters with strength 12 AP3 and damage 2 twin linked if you take two of them. They might only hit on a 4 plus but they get sustained hits due to the detachment rule. And of course, like the rest of the Orcs, they get absolutely ferocious in the turn that you call a war. Plus one strength, plus one attack, and advance and charge are all very nice things. Never mind the fact that their individual rule gives them crump in time. Devastating wounds on all their attacks. Given hitting on a 4 plus as well, they are particularly efficient for that critical wounds on a 5 plus stratagem, which could give you a few more sustained hits. They do have some fun leaders within the index as well. I think the big mech in Mega Armor is really quite fun to give them an invulnerable save and resurrecting slain models. But you could take the war boss or even Gaskell himself, who lives up to the hype as a pretty massive threat. 
of Raw. I think they're usable enough jumping out of a battle wagon or something. I've chosen to give them a 7 out of 10 here. Maybe not quite as commonly played as the regular knobs. And Orcs have plenty of other melee damage dealers to compete with them. Finally, last but not least, if we're including the Mega Knobs as the sort of joke entry, I feel like I'd probably have to include the Iron Here Half Guard as well. Again, technically not Terminators really, but I feel like they're close enough to fit the bill. The Space Dwarf version of big and chunky armour with exo power, crafted by artisans. Compared with the Space Marine Terminators and even the Orcs, the Iron Here Half Guard get a slightly side graded profile, a toughness 6, 2 plus save, and 2 wounds, though no invulnerable save. Or at least not unless you've got a Carl in the unit with a Rampart Crest. They're still really quite tanky and hard to take down for the wrong sort of firepower though. They get one of those minus one to wound rolls if they're bodyguarding a character. So it's usually worth having one of those along. And the Leagues of Votan do have access to Void Armour as well. Which can be a bit more relevant on units that don't have a good invulnerable save. Interestingly for these guys I'd say their shooting is just as standout as their melee. If you did go with a big investment squad of 10 of these guys, then that would give you 10d6 exo armor grenade launchers, all at strength 4, AP 0, damage 1, so that's a ridiculous amount of blast shots there. Should be enough to stack a massive amount of saves on just about anything that's a horde. That usually tends to be backed up by the Vulcanite weapons, another 30 shots at strength 5, AP 0, and damage 1. Loads more volume fire, but this one with devastating wounds. They're a pretty good unit to use the sustained hits 2 stratagem on. And that damage output only gets better if they're attacking things with multiple judgment tokens. Then if they can make melee, they can attack with those concussion gauntlets, two attacks at strength 9, AP 2 and damage 2. They'd probably be my go-to, though I've seen a few people using the plasma blades, plus the Hezir can take a concussion hammer for a big damage 3. Deep striking them often tends to be the way to go, with the teleport crest either on the Hezir or on the attached character. The Iron Hair champion is also a very efficient leader for them. The car grants lethal hits, the Iron Hair Champion gets you some big mortal wound impact hits on the charge, helps with their damage output, and re-rolling charge rolls is far from the worst thing to have out of Deep Strike. Overall, between all that, I think there's at least some good arguments that these guys are one of the strongest units out of the Leagues of Votan faction right now. Often making appearances in lists in fairly good numbers, I've chosen to give them a big 9 out of 10. In any case, with Core Terminators and a couple of Xenos near equivalents talked through, that just about brings us to the end of our look through Terminators in Warhammer 40k. Hope you've enjoyed a few thoughts as to each faction in the game and their heavily armoured elites. Look forward to hearing any other thoughts or feedback down in the comments below. How have you been enjoying playing either with or against these guys in 40k right now? If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming as I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.